this week on the show. Sky high in Sarajevo. <laughs> Jet powered in London. This technology is not stopping here. We are in the air. And above the English Channel, using the power of your phone. It's like a flying car. We're starting our travels this week in Sarajevo, the capital city of Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's fascinating and genuinely beautiful, and it feels more Turkish, more Islamic than much of the rest of the Balkans. These shops are just filled with jewels and silverware. And with that comes different architecture and a distinct food culture. The small city center lies in a valley surrounded by hills, so there are wonderful views almost everywhere. But of course, we don't know Sarajevo primarily for its beauty. We know it for the terrible siege that ended in more than 10,000 people losing their lives in the early 1990s. For three and a half years, Bosnian Serbs rained rockets down on this city. A quarter of a century later, the scars are still visible. This used to be a Holiday Inn and was where the world's press was stationed during the siege. It became a symbol of the war and you might remember its distinctive yellow cladding on the outside that's still been kept to this day. The hotel's only just changed hands. It's had extensive renovation work and it's recently reopened under a different name. You'd never know that for years it was subject to frequent shelling and gunfire. Normally you might pay extra for a beautiful view of these hills, but for that very same reason, it was one of the most dangerous spots to be in this hotel. Artillery fire was being blasted from the top of those hills and actually lit this building on fire above the fifth floor multiple times. I'm given a tour by Jairo. During the war, he ran catering for the journalists stationed here. These days, he's the executive director. <laughs> So who would normally win, staff or the journalists? <laughs> and so these are the, the goals, right? <laughs> oh, my tape and cloth. This is a, a piece of nostalgia right here. Yes, yes. yes. Pri and it's priceless. Hey! <laughs> He's got a leg on him. Okay, this time your keeper. Hey! <laughs> one, 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 one. <laughs> He's got tricks. Oh, through the legs! See, that's why Canadians don't play football. <laughs> Can you tell us what role the hotel played during the war? Pavit, u početnom periodu imali smo loš imidž. Gospodin Karaži bio smješten ovdje. I da je komanda kao išla odavde. Međutim, kasnije stvari se promijenile. Iskreno budem. Sva dešavanja u Bosni, malta ne išla su odavde u svijet. A to sve zahvaljujući našim ambasadorima, svjetskim domaćim i svjetskim novinarima koji su slali istinu u svijet. 
And the hotel went through some recent renovations and the average person walking in would not see anything that reminded them of the war. Da, svakako, onaj, prošlo se ne može, ne može zaboraviti. Ali mi moramo gledati na, na budućnost, jer onaj, a, ljudi koji gledaju unazad nemaju perspektive. Hiro is very keen to emphasize how this hotel is looking forward to the future these days. But it's not the only Bosnian icon getting a shiny makeover. This long abandoned cable car network finally reopened just a few months ago. I have one round trip ticket, please. It has been out of use since the war began. This is one of the old cable cars built for the Olympics in 1984. It was left abandoned and fell into ruin during the siege. But they still have one here on display. Hey. Isla here is deeply in love with Sarajevo. How was the ride? Nice. And she's agreed to take me up into the hills. So you can see all of Sarajevo. Yes. Every little bit, almost every little bit. Everything. All of its glory and beauty. The renovation of the cable car seems like a big deal for the city. Oh, okay. yes, it is. It's a symbol of a city. A lot of people like the fact that from the city center you can go up on the mountain like in a 10 minutes, enjoy the fresh air, beautiful nature, and then like again you're in, in the heart of the old town. The hills up here were positions for Serbian snipers and for artillery. There's a perfect view of most of Sarajevo. Only in recent times have the landmines been cleared, but you can still see the odd military bunker. Once at the top, there's one more repurposed relic, the bobsleigh track. Built for Sarajevo's moment in the sun, the Winter Olympics in 1984. It's been richly decorated and the color and the nature up here make for a wonderful ride. Action! Action! Ready, <laughs> steady, go! Ready, not so steady. <laughs> and I think I <laughs> might need more practice at this. We, we did a, I think it's quite a slow version because yes. yeah, I wanted to make sure the brakes work because you pick up speed really fast. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. There's supposed to be a bobsled shooting down this. Shooting, yeah. In the war, it was a shelter for a Serbian army that they used to shoot the city and everything. So unfortunately, it had that sad purpose. But I think that the people made the uh, uh, thing like to, to repaint it and everything and then to make it more joyful. With Interesting activities like this, do you think it's a step away from the memories of the war? Uh, yes, definitely. I think that people are urging to, to go forward, to not to think anymore about war, to, to, to have a normal life, to have a decent life. Uh, next February we have Winter Olympic Games for young ones. So I think also it's a good way uh, to show that over here we are more than what happened 20 years ago. Sarajevo feels very lightly touristed these days, particularly given its beauty. That's partly because the bigger budget airlines have yet to appear here. The moment they do, it all may change. But for now, exploring somewhere like Bascargia, the old town, is a total delight. As you wander around, you can hear people ding, bending coffer into coffee sets. You can smell the chavapi, the local meat dishes. And you wouldn't really expect there was a war here just 25 years ago. There's churches, there's mosques, there's synagogues, and there's actually a lot to see, all in this beautiful valley with these giant mountains. It's gorgeous. And there's a lot more to see here than just things that remind you of war. So if you're thinking you might come to Bosnia and Herzegovina, here are some things we think you should see and do. This year's Sarajevo Film Festival is now underway in the capital and is now the highlight of Bosnia's culture calendar. In just over 20 years, it's grown from a modest post-war reconstruction effort to one of the most important film festivals in Europe. And if you're not interested in the movies themselves, go for the atmosphere. The whole city becomes alive with concerts and parties. It all happens mid-August every year. Mostar's 16th century Starry Most Bridge is a stunning sight just to go and behold. But if you're in for an added thrill, you can go into the diving championships there on September 8th. 
Outside official competition times, tourists can have a go themselves, but you'll have to pay 25 euros to the Mostar Diving Club and be fully trained beforehand. People are injured and even die attempting this 24 meter jump. It's not something to be taken lightly. 40 kilometers south of Mostar are the jaw-dropping Kravitz Falls. You can camp, you can picnic, you can swim in the lake, all for less than four US dollars, around three euros. There are caves and grottos to explore and canoeing options as well. But even in the peak months, Kravitz Falls never feels overcrowded. Still to come on The Travel Show. How jet power is coming to a pair of arms near you. It could be seen as one of the first steps down a road towards a whole new form of human mobility. And how ride sharing isn't just for the roads. Oh my goodness. This is tiny. So don't go away. This week I'm exploring Sarajevo, the picturesque capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina. There's one little cultural quirk I'm keen on getting to grips with while I'm here. The Bosnians love their coffee. It's actually a little bit like Turkish coffee, but there's a special trick on how to drink it. When it's served, you might find it all arranged like this, and at first, it's honestly a little bit intimidating. Wait, hold on, hold on. This looks like a medieval chemistry set. I have no, no idea what to do. You, okay, so the deal is uh, you have some sherbet here, which is like Ottoman, Ottoman like pasta that comes with almost every food or drink. That's rose, rose sherbet. Like a rose water. Like a rose water. You need to taste it, taste it. So you, a little bit sweet just to sort of quench, yeah. quench the coffee. Yeah. So they put the coffee in there like that. Right. Now, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Before you go, all right. right, you have to hit one of these uh, Turkish delights, lokon. They're called lokon. And I eat it or I dunk it? No, you don't dunk it. No, 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 no. no. That's actually really good. The, the hot coffee melts the Turkish delight in your mouth. That's right. That's it's really right. nice. It's really nice. And you can also do it with the sugar. You can dump the sugar in and just dump it a little bit and it starts spreading up and then you put the sugar in and the sugar will stay in your mouth. It's the same sort of thing. That's old time. That's like, if you do that in a cafe here, they'll be like, oh, they'll think, you have bossy roots or something like that. <laughs> and this all goes in or just the bite? In, 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 in. You gotta throw it in, throw it in, throw it in, throw it in, throw it in. A lot of sugar in this region. That's a lot of sugar. Bossy coffee. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks. Still chewing. It's crunchy. Good though. It's now time for Trending Travel, our regular pick of the top photos, videos, and stories all happening online this week. If you're in London this summer, you can experience the world's longest zip line. It's all the way from the UAE. Wearing a pair of goggles, visitors to Zip Now are transported to Raz Al Khaimah. It's being billed as a world first, so we sent along Rajan, who was there three years ago. It's very strange. I'm now in a completely different universe. Down a little bit. Three, two, one, go. And if you want to test it out, Zip Now is open until September 9th. All right. It's not like being above the Jamil Andres Mountains. It's like being on another planet. Security lines at the airport can be one of the most frustrating parts of a trip. But things could be getting a whole lot easier with the new 3D baggage scanners being trialed at Heathrow and New York's JFK. With trials expected to last at least six more months, it'll be a while before they become commonplace. So for now, you're just going to have to keep on waiting. And superhero fans, meet the real-life Iron Man. Inventor Richard Browning, whose science fiction made reality jet suit, has just gone on sale in the UK. With only nine suits available, we ask him, is it really the future of travel? We started this journey really for the thrill of the challenge of doing something that was supposed to be impossible. However, it's been so successful and been seen by millions all over the world, that we don't now discount the potential that it could be seen as one of the first steps down a road towards a whole new form of human mobility. The first motor car was considered completely impractical and inefficient, and look what's happened with that. This technology is not stopping here. Moving on now to online travel videos. Here are some great ones racking up the likes this month. 
Last week, the travel show took Lucy to South Africa, where they're celebrating 100 years since the birth of Nelson Mandela. Now we meet two filmmakers, George and Roth, to find out more about their experiences in the Rainbow Nation. So I don't like to set up shots or try and capture specific things. I think with a country like South Africa, it's all there in front of you. So if you have a camera with you and the right tools, you're going to capture some amazing things. I was just blown away at what I was able to see and the beauty of the countryside and also I just admired a lot of the people that I met there. They were all very nice and welcoming. If you're planning on traveling to South Africa, always have your camera ready because it is also full of experiences that you can't quite prepare for. Make sure to keep sending us your stories and your photos of the places you live and the places you love. And who knows, maybe next time you'll be trending in travel. In the 1920s and 30s, Le Touquet on France's north coast was the glitzy destination of choice for wealthy British socialites. The birth of the jet age and long haul travel mean it's been largely overlooked ever since. But now, innovations in flight sharing could put it back on your radar. We sent Catmo to try it out. Just outside of London, not far from Heathrow, is Blackbush Airport. This isn't quite what I was expecting, but I'm told this is the airport. Hey, Paul. Hi, Kat. How are you? Good. Good to see you, yeah. A lovely sunny day. Hardly any wind. As you can see, the wind stops completely uh, pointing downwards, so it should be a very smooth flight, yeah. I'm sharing a flight with Paul. He got his <laughs> private pilot's licence 25 years ago. I don't know how he can fit four people Oh wait. <laughs> two in the front, two in the back. It's quite simple. Oh, my goodness. This is tiny. I found Paul through a website called Wingly. Think Uber of the skies, sort of. You pick a date, destination, request a seat and pay. It's one of a number of flight sharing platforms out there, flying between general aviation airfields, which are often closer to town. So I've chosen a day trip to Le Touquet in France. day job is in IT. Being able to share flights helps pay for this rather expensive hobby and keep his flying hours up. Now the cost is a, is a major thing, so we get to fly, you know, a third or maybe in a quarter of the cost of the, the, what we normally do because we split that with our passengers. How do you work out how much to charge passengers? There's only certain costs that we can include, so it's the hire of the plane, the fuel in the plane, landing fees, things like that, not, not fixed costs. Uh, but then they just get divided by the number of uh, passengers in the plane. Because you're not allowed to make any money out of this, are you? No, I'm not a commercial pilot, so I'm not allowed to make any profit. So I'm paying this for this flight the same as you are. My plane seat cost £150, but unlike a commercial flight, it's very weather dependent and could have been cancelled at a moment's notice if Paul felt it wasn't safe to fly. I'm flying over the uh, channel now. We've started to pick up some French uh, radio signals coming through. Welcome to Yay! My legs definitely feel a bit wobbly. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I didn't have breakfast this morning. The 2K was once a busy international hub, but now you need a private plane to fly here. So flight sharing is a great way to visit without blowing the budget. Plus, the airport is practically in town, so all you need is a bike. Once you clear customs, of course. 
pilot Paul to tour guide Paul. <laughs> Ready to go? I think so. Let's go. Okay. Oh my gosh. I've got to here. remember which side of the road I need to be on. Oh yeah. It's a quiet seaside town on northern France's Opal coast. The majority of visitors these days are French, with some internationals, but that hasn't always been the case. The ticket. More and more they're going there. Those endowed with more worldly goods than sense. From the 20s through to 50s, it was the stomping ground for rich Brits and the fashionable flying in. These days, if you want to go to the devil, you can go there for £10. Return. Well, it's a bit more now. I met up with Alice, who is a local tour guide and historian. Well, I recognise this guy. Yeah, Sean Connery. He went here in the, in the 62, wrote, signed his contract, actually, in the Westminster. Oh, he did? Doctor Knows movie. It's also believed Lutuke inspired Ian Fleming to write his first James Bond novel here, Casino Royale. Have you noticed a shift in the type of people who come here? I think I have noticed, uh, maybe for one year, two years now, people coming from further nowadays. Uh, before, regular people were coming from Paris, Lille, Britain as well, Belgium. And now we get more and more people coming from further, so it's getting more and more yeah, attractive. The town is now a mix of old British charm and French leisure with hints of its bygone days. And this 116-year-old chocolate shop is an institution here. OK, confession time. I maybe got a little bit carried away in there. But it's not so good. But all good things come to an end. We have to be back before sunset because the airfield in Britain has no runway lights to land. Looks like we made it just in time. Well, that's all for this week, but coming up next week... Rajan's traveling through Hokkaido, Japan's northern island, where he gets hands-on with a striking local food culture and has the dubious honor of meeting one of its hungriest residents. And in the meantime, don't forget you can follow us on social media. The links to those accounts are found on our website. From me, Mike Corey, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in Sarajevo, it's goodbye. <laughs>